it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, the next speaker, uh, Andrei Lazarev. Uh, sorry, I forget which university in Lancaster. Lancaster University uh, in Great Britain. Uh, he will speak on uh, co derived categories and their applications. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'd like to uh, start by thanking the organizers for uh, making this uh, event possible and for letting me uh, speak before you. I've uh, known um, <clears throat> Viktor Matejevich Bokstaber for uh, a long time, many years. It's a remarkable mathematician and a remarkable person, and I'm honored to have known him and to have collaborated with him on a couple of occasions. Um, the uh, subject of my talk is co-derived categories and their uses. Okay, I'd like to try uh, to keep this talk as non-technical as possible. And in particular, I won't even um, take for granted your knowledge of ordinary derived categories. So I will uh, say a few words about uh, uh, the definition of an ordinary derived category, why it's important, and why it is insufficient in uh, certain situations. So let's say that A is a differential graded algebra. That is to say, a, uh, a differential graded vector space also known as a chain complex, uh, together with a multiplication map, such as this, which makes it into uh, an associative and unital monoid in the um, um, monoidal category of differential graded vector spaces. So that's uh, probably the shortest definition of a differential graded algebra. There is, of, of course, various other equivalent definitions. Um, associated to A is a certain category, D of A, which is called the derived category of A. Uh, there are several uh, approaches to its definition. Um, probably the most uh, the shortest kind of geodesic path to defining to defining the uh, derived category of A is as follows. So first, we define the notion of a semi-free uh, A module. Okay, and this is just um, an A module, and the, usually I will be speaking about right A modules. Of course, it doesn't really matter. It's only a matter of uh, convenience for me uh, at the expense of just introducing a few more signs or just changing signs. We can switch from A uh, from left to right modules. Nevertheless, I will stick with right modules. So a semi-free A module is a module of the form A tensor V, okay, D. So V here, is a graded vector space. Okay, so if D is equal to zero, then this is just a free uh, A module over V. The action of A on this thing is by uh, right multiplication on A. Okay, so it's through this um, uh, left, um, tensor factor that A acts on this module, right? And D is a certain differential uh, such that it's, uh, uh, it has a certain property. It's not quite uh, arbitrary, okay? Namely, uh, we say that uh, V is itself decomposed into a direct sum of Vn, uh, or maybe Vi, uh, I from zero to infinity. Okay, and the differential of the i is inside uh, a tensor v i minus one. Okay, so what that means is that 
uh, first of all, just saying that this is of the form A tensor V is nothing but saying that this is a free A module. Okay, that's it. And then this condition says that there is a uh, there is a filtration um, on this such that the associated graded are essentially um, uh, isomorphic to possibly um, suspension the, um, the sums of suspensions of A itself. Okay, so not every uh, um, differential has this property. Okay, so we call this such uh, module semi-free or sometimes they're also called cofibrant modules. In fact, the definition of a cofibrant module is a little bit more general, but uh, the difference here uh, won't matter for us. Okay, so that's the uh, first step to the definition. And the second is that we define D of A as having objects semi-free A modules. So that's just objects. And morphisms in D of A are, just by definition, chain homotopy classes. of chain maps of A modules. OK, that's it. OK, that's essentially uh, a definition of a derived category of a, of a differential graded algebra. If a differential graded algebra has a zero differential, uh, then uh, that would uh, reduced to an ordinary definition of the derived category of a ring or of an algebra, okay? There, uh, there is another definition, another definition uh, is through a Verdier localization. And I will say a few words about that as well. <clears throat> so uh, in this other definition, we first form uh, the homotopy category of A, okay? And that's just... Uh, the category of all differential graded A modules together with chain um, maps up to chain homotopy. So that's not the same as the derived category. Okay, the difference being is that this category, the homotopy category, contains a lot more objects. Okay, in fact, uh, this category, of course, contains a lot more information about A than the derived category of A. But at the same time, it is so difficult that uh, it doesn't allow one to, uh, to work with it effectively. There's various ways uh, to um, formalize this last statement. In particular, if uh, you're familiar with the notion of well-generatedness uh, of Amnon Neyman of a triangulated category, then uh, it's, it turns out that the uh, homotopy category of abelian groups, that is to say when A is just said, is not well-generated. Not going to say what that means, but it means that it's very, very badly behaved. It's, it's very difficult, okay? It's, um, uh, there is various uh, set theoretical problems um, 
present when you work uh, in this category. But of course, it does contain a lot of information and a lot more information than this derived category. Okay, so <clears throat> so why uh, would one be interested in uh, studying derived categories of differential graded algebras? First of all, of course, uh, uh, it is classical that derived categories of, say, uh, associative algebras, say finite dimensional associative algebras, and in particular uh, finite groups, is a very important invariant. Okay, and that invariant has been studied uh, very extensively by representation theorists. Uh, for algebraic geometers, uh, one can offer uh, the following explanation. So if X is a smooth separated scheme, and if you don't know what that is, think about smooth projective algebraic variety, okay? And I hope that everybody knows what that means, then the derived category of coherent sheaves on X is equivalent to the derived category of some differential graded algebra. So A is some DGA, okay? Of course, a very, um, uh, uh, a very trivial and obvious uh, instance of this result is the, is when X itself is affine, okay? In which case, uh, the derived category of, um, in which case uh, this uh, uh, scheme is just spec of a ring and the derived category of that ring is uh, the derived category of coherent sheaves on A. But uh, that is also true for, uh, 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 for projective schemes. For example, if X, is Pn, okay? We can take for A to be the uh, algebra of derived endomorphisms of the following sheaf, O of zero plus O of minus one plus et cetera, plus O of minus N, okay? So our end here, uh, signifies that this is a differential graded algebra rather than just a graded algebra. Okay, so we take this thing, we uh, we take its resolution, we take the uh, 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 algebra of derived and the morphisms that is a differential graded algebra, and then uh, d of a is uh, uh, equivalent to the derived category of x. And again, this is not just uh, an isolated phenomenon. Uh, it happens for every smooth separated scheme and even in somewhat more generality, okay? So that just uh, emphasizes that um, derived categories of differential graded algebras as opposed to non-differential graded algebras uh, are of some importance, okay? Okay, on the other hand, um, yeah, I, I forgot to mention one example, which is kind of a non-example um, of a semi-free uh, module. And that example should probably be here. Okay, if A is just lambda of X, okay? Uh, the exterior algebra on one generator and a classical uh, example of um, a free differential graded module, which is not semi-free, is as follows. A, A, A. So going in both directions so that lambda of X goes into lambda of X and one goes to X, okay? So this, by the way, is a, is a complex. Here, I'm, uh, I'm using a slightly different language, a complex rather than a differential graded vector space. Same thing though, right? Uh, <clears throat> I just unwrapped uh, this uh, differential graded vector space into a, 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 
uh, into the form uh, of a chain complex. This chain complex is acyclic, okay? It's obviously free. It's not semi-free in this sense, okay? And for those uh, who know a little bit of um, uh, theory of model categories, one can say that this module, this differential graded A module is not cofibrant, okay? So this is not something that could be uh, used to uh, compute derived functors such as ext or tor. When you say you mean graded by integer or by negative? In general, by integers. In this case, it's not even graded, okay? It's an ordinary uh, ring or ordinary algebra sitting in degree zero. So even, even in this uh, case, when A is an ordinary algebra, this, um, uh, this assumption on D is essential. Okay, for uh, constructing the uh, derived category. Okay. So there are situations. where D of A is too crude. So here's an example to keep in mind for those uh, which are topologically minded. Let's say that X is a smooth uh, manifold. Maybe compact, maybe not. And omega of x is the Dirac algebra of x. Okay. So then d of omega x it does contain some information about x the derived category of this uh, differential graded algebra. But not nearly enough in the case when X <clears throat> is not simply connected. So this category does not see uh, the information about um, pi one of X, at least when, if it is not no potent. And even if it's no potent, it doesn't uh, have, it doesn't see all the information about it. So here's an example to keep in mind. X is RPM. Oh, actually, before I go on to this example, uh, let me just uh, make one uh, general uh, statement about the uh, derived category, in which, uh, uh, which is to say what sort of invariant it is. Okay, so if A and A prime are quasi-isomorphic, okay, then D of A is equivalent to D of A prime. So it's an invariant of a quasi-isomorphism. For example, if it, if it happens that a differential graded algebra is formal, then it has the same derived category as its homology. All right, so back to this example, we have that uh, RPN, uh, has zero homology or cohomology with uh, coefficients in R, okay? So omega of X is quasi-isomorphic to R sitting in degree zero. And it's even. Okay, right. Yes. All right. But, then, uh, but on the other hand, uh, it doesn't follow
that uh, there are no non-trivial representations um, of pi one of RP two, right? And each such representation gives rise to a certain flat vector bundle. Okay, so at least we don't have uh, anything to do. We we, we don't see uh, flat vector bundles from uh, from the derived category of omega of x. So that's that's kind of strange, right? Because uh, uh, we all know that flat vector bundles uh, uh, have to do with uh, flat connections and flat connections. Uh, could be viewed as some kind of differential graded modules over uh, over omega of x. So what's going on? Well, what's going on is that the uh, differential graded modules over uh, the Dirac algebra, which are relevant to uh, flat connections, are not cofibrant. That's what happens. Okay. So in other words. Uh, omega of x still has plenty of uh, non-trivial homotopical information about x, homotopical information. Nevertheless, uh, once you uh, take omega of x up to quasi-isomorphism, all this information is lost. Okay, so what can we do? Is there something that we can do to rectify this situation. So um, I've explained, I've outlined how one can construct um, uh, the derived category of a differential graded algebra. And this is a certain invariant of a DGA, which is um, uh, cruder than the homotopy category of A. So whenever we have uh, some triangulated category, which is obtained from the homotopy category of A, perhaps by localization, but which is not quite the derived category, such that the derived category could be obtained by further localization. We say that uh, we have a derived category of second kind of a DGA. This is not a well-defined notion, okay? So essentially, uh, a derived category of second kind or sometimes co-derived category is anything that sits between the full derived category and the homotopy, uh, homotopy category of an algebra. Okay, and it turns out that uh, there is a particularly uh, nice um, triangulated category uh, which uh, sits between uh, these two categories, which is called the derived, uh, uh, which is called the uh, derived category, co-derived category of uh, compactly generated co-derived uh, category. So compactly generated. Co derived category of a DGA. So, again, uh, I would like to emphasize I will denote it like this, okay? And uh, it, will, it will be sitting between the homotopy category of A and the derived category of A. It doesn't have as much information about the homotopy category of A, but it has more information than the full derived category of A. Okay, so how do we uh, define this? All right, so first, let me uh, define the notion of a twisted A module, a twisted a module 
And uh, first, let me start with a finitely generated twisted module. Is uh, a differential graded A module of the form Okay, so what? Homotopy category is large. Ah, yes. Well, in some sense, one could say that uh, I, I think what I had in mind is that this would be a localization of the homotopy category. So there would be a, a localization functor and then the localization functor here. But then again, it would also be a, a subcategory. So all these inclusions are actually Bauss field localizations. They're both, uh, their functors going both ways. Okay, this is something that I certainly didn't want to, uh, uh, don't want to elaborate on right now. Okay, so um, if you remember what I wrote pretty much at the same place, uh, maybe uh, 15 minutes ago, it was kind of the same, right? except now there is no restrictions on d but let me just put a one restriction on d dim d is less than infinity if you don't mind okay so this is clearly a simpler notion than uh, that of a semi-free module okay just any a uh, finitely generated free module on A with any differential whatsoever. Okay. Unfortunately, I still have to um, uh, impose the condition of finite dimensionality. Okay. So that's a finite, uh, finitely generated uh, module and the general uh, twisted module. is a filtered co-limit of finitely generated ones. And if you don't like this terminology, filtered co-limit, how about just a union, right? Union. All right? So the notion of a co-derived category or a derived category of second kind was introduced by uh, Leonid Posizelsky, and uh, he didn't impose that condition of finite dimensionality. Okay, it's possible to uh, to construct a, a more general uh, co-derived category. It's just that it would be uh, uh, rather harder to work with than the one that I described. Okay. One can do certain things about it. It will be uh, uh, still um, rather uh, simpler than the full homotopy category, but it will be still uh, quite a bit more complicated than what I'm defining now, okay? So here is an example, all right? And this is an example uh, that you should always keep in mind when thinking about uh, twisted modules. Ah. Yeah, I made that mistake again. So V is equal to one. So if V is equal to one, so this is this V here, okay? So we just have A, D, okay? Well, you 
I'll just tell me, well, a, a already has a differential. What's the differential there? Well, D does not have to be the same as DA, right? So D is not necessarily the same as uh, the internal differential here, okay? So A is a free module of rank one, which has a one basis element one, okay? So everything is determined by where one goes to and let one go, go to X, okay? So one goes to X, D of X is equal to D of one times X, and this is equal to D of one times X plus um, one times D A of X. Okay, so D of X is my differential here, okay, but D A is uh, is the previous differential is the is the original differential okay so d of 1 is x so x squared plus d and this 1 times this is just uh, d of x right so d a uh, of x is equal to z okay why is it equal to 0 because d squared should be 0 right so 1 goes to x x should go to zero. In fact, uh, this is an if and only if condition, okay? So x, so d is determined by the element x in a, in fact, a1, right? It's an element in degree one such that uh, da x plus x squared is equal to z. And if you forget this a for the time being, okay, uh, then what you get is just uh, the so-called more Cartan equation. So x has to be a more Cartan element. So if you think about this uh, for a couple of minutes, then you'll convince yourself that's an if and only if condition, okay? So there are as many A module structures on A compatible with A as there are Morikartan elements in X. And an element is called Morikartan if and only if, by definition, it satisfies this condition, okay? So if, for example, x is equal to zero, then we have uh, a has the original differential. In general, we have d of a will be equal to dA of A plus uh, x A, okay? Again, this is very easy to check, okay? Such a differential squares to zero if and only if x uh, is a more Cartan element. And we have then, uh, we obtain a twisted A module, which is sometimes denoted like this, okay? So it's the, uh, if you forget about the differential, it's A itself, but the differential is given by this formula. Such a module is never cofibrant. Well, it's, there is exactly one case when it's cofibrant, and then that's, that's when X is equal to zero, okay? In all other cases, it will not be cofibrant. It doesn't have a filtration such that associated graded are isomorphic to A, okay? Because it's so small, all right? More generally,
uh, any twisted module of the form A tensor V, D is determined, determines and is determined by, so let me uh, write it like this, slightly uh, imprecisely, is determined, but also is, uh, determines uh, a Morikatan element in uh, and of V tensor A. Okay. I won't prove that, but the proof is not that much different from uh, this trivial case when V is equal to zero. Okay. All right, so that's the definition of uh, a twisted module, or rather of a finite dimensional uh, twisted module. And then um, uh, we will take unions of those. If you would like, if you, uh, if, uh, if you like linear algebra, then you can say that uh, the condition on the semi-free module can be reformulated as saying that the matrix of the differential is for triangular, okay? Whereas here, it is kind of block uh, upper triangular, okay? Where the block uh, correspond, where blocks correspond to those twisted modules. So blocks are finite dimensional, okay? So there are, uh, those are uh, matrices of um, uh, uh, finite size. If V is finite dimensional, then there is no uh, condition on the matrix whatsoever. Okay, so now we're ready for the definition of uh, the co-derived category. Com yes. Uh, um, are you talking about uh, the definition of the ordinary derived category? Um, the objects in the derived category are by definition semi-free modules. So those are things of this form plus uh, this filtration, which I mentioned before. Yeah, only this assumption. But that's a very severe assumption that, that restricts uh, and that's uh, that's by no that by no means is uh, uh, is an arbitrary uh, uh, a module, right? It's a free module, and uh, and then there is some other condition on D, right? So for a twisted module, it's kind of the same, except that the definition on D is made weaker. Okay, one could think that the weakening is uh, rather weak, but in fact, it's uh, it is rather drastic. Okay as this example demonstrates. In, in the case when V is equal to one, there is only one uh, structure of a semi-free uh, module on A, but there's plenty in general uh, of uh, structure of MC elements in A, and those uh, correspond to the structure of a finitely generated twisted module on A. Okay, so now uh, we can give the definition of uh, the de uh, co-derived category of A. So firstly, uh, the objects of the co-derived category of A are twisted A modules. Okay? And then the morphisms are chain homotopy classes of maps. Chain homotopy classes of chain maps. So you can see the definition is very, very similar. Okay? Uh, just as before, uh, we can give another definition which will be equivalent to it. Uh, remember that 
uh, the, def uh, um, the definition of the derived category was, uh, uh, the first definition was in this uh, kind of fashion, right? And another was uh, through, through the localization of the homotopy category, okay? So what is that localization? To localize a triangulated category, we need to specify a collection of morphisms by which to localize. So we'll localize the homotopy category of uh, DG modules by quasi-isomorphisms, and how, uh, that's how we get the usual derived category, okay? So here, the analog of a quasi-isomorphism is the following. So given M and N, two differential graded modules, we say that they're weakly equivalent. M is weakly equivalent to N if and only if, by definition, for any finitely generated twisted module L, we have that uh, homotopy classes of maps from L into M are in one-to-one -one correspondence with homotopy classes of maps from L into M. Okay, so that's homotopy classes, chain homotopy classes. Notice how this directly generalizes the notion of a quasi-isomorphism. If for L, we take, so take for L, A. What do we get here? Okay, so homotopy classes of maps, and here, uh, I might as well uh, uh, put the graded homotopy classes of maps. Okay, so what is this? That's just the homology of M, right? So maps from A into M over A, that's just hom homology of M. So that gives rise to a quasi-isomorphism. H star of M is the same as H star of L. So you can see that if we take for L, uh, an untwisted module, okay, or a module with a uh, with a trivial twisting, we get back the notion of a quasi-isomorphism, okay. But since uh, there are quite a lot more twisted modules than there are uh, semi-free modules, semi-free modules essentially uh, is generated by A itself, right? You have A, you have uh, uh, suspensions of A, direct sums of A, and cofibers. Okay, but here instead of A, you have all possible twisted modules. Okay, so uh, if you have this notion of a weak equivalence, then you can localize with respect to that uh, uh, the homotopy category of A, and this, and and you get this derived category. Again, this is a uh, uh, this is a consequence of a much more general result, which involves uh, developing uh, uh, this in the context of model categories and so forth. But roughly speaking, everything that you can say about the construction of the ordinary derived category, you can say uh, in this context as well. Okay. Okay, so the last thing that I would like to say in this talk is uh, why do we need that? I will give some application of this uh, technology and uh, I have to mention and probably should have mentioned that before that uh, this uh, is part of, or maybe parts of joint work, or maybe joint works with Iguan and Julian Holstein.
Okay, so let's formulate a theorem. Okay. So let's call it theorem A. Let's not call it theorem A. Let's call it theorem one. Uh, A is omega of X, where X is a smooth manifold. Then we have a certain identification of this co-derived category. Then A, then D co of A is or is equivalent to the minimal triangulated category subcategory of the derived category, the ordinary derived category of sheaves on X containing locally constant sheaves and arbitrary direct sums. So that's something that you could have already uh, guessed from, uh, 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 from thinking about uh, the classical Riemann-Hilbert correspondence, right? The, like the classical or the topological Riemann-Hilbert correspondence tells you that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between representations of the fundamental group of a manifold, which is to say um, locally constant sheaves, and uh, flat connections uh, on vector bundles. Okay, so flat connection. Huh. All right. Uh, correspond to uh, differential graded uh, modules over the Dirama algebra and uh, um, uh, such flat connections are naturally gauge equivalent if and only if uh, the corresponding differential graded modules are equivalent in this derived category. So that's theorem one and theorem two is if A is Omega zero star of X, the Dolbo algebra of a complex analytic manifold X then again we have a similar uh, characterization of the co-derived category by saying that this co-derived category is equivalent to again the minimal triangulated subcategory of, again, the derived category of all sheaves on X containing, containing what? This, this, uh, invisible. Invisible, okay. Maybe I'll just uh, write it here and stop. Maybe can you use a different mark? Minimal triangulated subcategory 
of the full derived category of sheaves on X containing sheaves with coherent cohomology and arbitrary direct sums. So it's kind of similar. In particular, um, if uh, the complex analytic manifold is in fact algebraic, and this is what's, uh, what's called the uh, uh, full derived category of coherent sheaves on X. And I think that's it. Thank you very much. And I would like to finish by uh, extending my best wishes to uh, Viktor Matejevich Bookstaber and uh, um, wishing him many fruitful years. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions, questions? comments? Yes. Uh, why it is called co derived category? There are some model structure. Uh, on this modules where this uh, weak equivalents are weak equivalences and those things are vibrant. Uh, except, right, except one, uh, it's a good question. Uh, uh, one answer to that is that um, a similar uh, sort of construction was given for co-modules over co-algebra. And uh, in that context, it's really, uh, the best invariant that could be constructed. So here, for, an, uh, for a ring or for a differential graded algebra, that's one of the many, one could say, a co-derived category. But in the co-setting, uh, co in, the, in the setting of co-modules, it's really one and only, okay? And then we'll try to do something on the algebra side, and it turns out uh, that something very similar could be done, and it was called co-derived there, so let's call it co-derived here as well. Right, thank you. Uh, well, like just an association. Uh, uh, if I remember correctly, there's a reformulation of classical massy products in a DJ in terms of Maurer Cartan elements uh, in the paper by Babianka and Taimanov. So, are two set models related to massy products in a sense? Um, right. Um... In some sense, um, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. Could you uh, uh, maybe rephrase it? Same equation. I say, in some kind of equation, there is a, a deep, completely different branch of mathematics. This is a completely different context. Uh, well, I'm not sure about that. It seems to me that uh, all those contexts have tend to have a lot in similar with each other. Maybe I, I could try to answer the question as I understand it. If you have an A infinity algebra, right, which is, I guess, uh, a generalization of a differential graded algebra, there is a notion of a more Cartan element. Okay? It's similar to uh, the one which, to this one, but it also involves higher brackets or high, uh, higher products. Okay? Again, uh, you might consider some kind of uh, um, a more Cartan moduli in the A infinity setting, and you can consider uh, a twisting of A infinity algebras or A infinity modules by the uh, by the corresponding uh, A infinity uh, more Cartan elements. And in some sense, uh, it's it's similar to what we have here. Again, uh, in that context, it won't be true that uh, the corresponding modules will be. Um, uh, uh, so, so you can consider twisted modules in that context, but again, uh, uh, you, you will naturally come to the necessity to consider a more uh, a, a finer notion of a weak equivalence than just quasi-isomorphism. Well, I guess what I'm saying is that there, there should be an analog of everything that I said in the A-infinity context, okay? I, I just don't know uh, what this is good for, 
because various differential grade algebras and modules that arise in nature are actually modules over differential grade algebras rather than infinity algebras. But that's quite possible that uh, there are some further applications along these lines. Okay, thank you. Well, some other questions or comments? Yeah, and is it true that if you form this quadratic category only from finitely generated twist models, then theorem one and theorem two remains true if you will consist like finitely generated locally constant shifts and yeah. final direction. Sure. Yeah, and if you consist it only from finitely generated twisted model, is it true that you shouldn't localize anything between because those conditions are just trivial? Well, uh, which the, condition is trivial? Um, it's a lower condition. It's just says that in, in, if you work in the category of finitely generated models, then it says just M is chain homotopy equivalent to M. No, just yeah. take L to M and L to M. If you take L equal M, then. Uh, not sure. I, uh, so, uh, okay, so we, we, uh, we work in the category of finitely generated twisted modules. Yeah, yeah. Still a rather non trivial category, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, and this least condition, it's about what? That you, you should say that- This um, condition? Yeah, it just we, says that M is weakly homotopy equivalent to M, yeah. So L here is finitely generated. Yeah, yeah, take L to M. But that's a tip of here, right? So be, yeah. Right, okay, so in, in general, one can say the following. Two, uh, yeah, I can give you a more general answer to your question. Uh, no matter whether your uh, twisted modules are finitely generated or not, if they're weakly equivalent, they will be uh, 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 homotopy equivalent. That actually follows from some more uh, general uh, machinery. Yes, that's true. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But that, and uh, notice that this also is true uh, in the context of the ordinary derived category, right? You have two cofibrant modules and they're weakly equivalent. That is quasi isomorphic. They're, they're necessarily uh, homotopy equivalent. Okay, some kind of a whitehead theorem. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, well, uh... I think further so questions can be uh, asked during some coffee breaks. Uh, and let's thank the speaker again. Uh, and uh, we still need some technical uh, breaks. So let us start in 1535.